The Dark Troopers have recently been brought back into canon during the second season of The Mandalorian. In Legends, these troopers were absolute tanks, and I believe the show did a pretty good job of capturing their raw power. The only real threat to them was an immensely powerful Jedi such as Luke Skywalker. However, in Legends, the Dark Troopers were arguably even more terrifying and powerful. Today, we will discuss all that is known about every single Dark Trooper variant. So, where did the Dark Trooper project come from? In short, it was a continuation of the Clone Trooper project. The Clone Army of the Republic were known as one of the most fearsome and effective fighting forces the galaxy had ever known. Despite being outnumbered 100 to 1, the Jango Fett clones outmatched and eventually defeated the droid army of the Confederacy of Independent Systems. After the rise of the Galactic Empire, however, the use of clones quickly declined. The high expense of growing and training a clone, as well as the Kaminoan Rebellion in Legends, saw the Empire quickly turn to the cheaper but much less effective recruitment system that was seen for the majority of the Imperial Era. With the retirement of many of the Empire's experienced clones, the ineffectiveness of the newly recruited stormtroopers became increasingly apparent. Disgruntled Imperial officers, led by Lieutenant Ron Mock, sought to bring clone veterans back into peak condition. Using cybernetics based upon Lord Vader's, the first phase of the Dark Trooper program was initiated. Up to 70% of the subject's organs were forcibly replaced in order to enhance the clone veterans into an elite fighting force, with both the ingenuity of a clone and the strength of an elite battle droid. These Phase Zero cyborg Dark Troopers were extremely effective on the battlefield and were even organized into squadrons. They became some of the most feared Imperial assets in the entire galaxy with their cyborg nature giving them an almost legendary status, much like Lord Vader himself. Despite the Phase Zero project having some success, it was eventually shut down. Unfortunately, the mental strain on the clones being forced into cyborg bodies was often too much for them to bear, with many going completely insane. This discouraged the Empire from further investing in the project, and money was funneled into other things such as the Death Star. However, after aiding in the production of the L8L9 and the ZX3 experimental battle droids, the former overseer of the Phase Zero Dark Trooper project would seek to revitalize the Dark Troopers. Now General, Ron Mock was opposed to the various superweapons that were secretly in production. A proud and experienced general, he strongly believed in the values of close combat warfare and looked down upon such superweapon projects as foolish and cowardly. Drawing upon his experience in the production of battle droids, he would seek to remove what he saw as the greatest weakness of the Phase Zero Dark Trooper, the need for the cybernetic augmentation of a biological being. Despite major reservations from other morphs who still viewed battle droids disfavorably due to the Clone Wars, the project was eventually given the green light. The production of the Dark Troopers was to take place under the Imperial Department of Military Research, with the main facility being the Ark Hammer factory ship. To ensure the secrecy of the project, the Ark Hammer would regularly jump through hyperspace to random locations, with only Lord Vader's ship, the Executor, having any idea where it was located. The Phase 1 Dark Trooper was more of a prototype. They were sometimes clad in lightsaber resistant metal and were equipped with a blaster shield and a vibra sword. Some were also armed with jump packs that allowed them to use their vibra swords at incredible speeds. As these Dark Troopers had no ranged weaponry, they were predominantly used for the protection of Imperial installations and saw extremely limited use. The Phase 2 Dark Troopers were much more effective in battle and were the first to be properly utilized by the Empire. As well as being much bulkier than the Phase 1 Dark Trooper, their armor was usually made from a lightsaber and blaster resistant alloy known as Frick. Their weaponry was also far superior to its predecessor, carrying an assault cannon which could fire 400 plasma shells and 20 missiles before needing to reload. This phase was also equipped with a jump pack and an arc caster, which could be used to disable droid electronics or fry organics. These droids could also be used as an exoskeleton, meaning they could benefit from the ingenuity of an organic while also having the raw power and strength of an advanced battle droid. Most importantly, this could be achieved without any of the drawbacks that were presented during Phase Zero of the Dark Trooper project. 
after the destruction of the first Death Star, the Dark Troopers were deployed to attack the Rebel Alliance at Tal Tak base. This showcased their ferocity, and they completely destroyed the base in mere minutes, with only one ship managing to escape the onslaught. These troopers also had several variants which served various, more specialised purposes. For example, the Dark Nova troopers were programmed with expertise in boarding enemy ships. They also had even more armour than the standard Phase 2 Dark Trooper and were armed with heavily modified DLT 20A blaster rifles. They remained in operation throughout the Galactic Civil War, although they were quite rare. The majority of the Dark Trooper variants were used for keeping the peace. Their menacing presence and legendary reputation was often enough to keep a subjugated population in line. For instance, the Exogen class Dark Trooper as well as the Oppressor 7 and upgraded Oppressor 9 class Dark Troopers were designed for law enforcement. They were equipped with E11 carbines and stun batons. The most legendary of these law enforcement variants were the Urban Assault and Glory class Dark Troopers, which were equipped with EE11 blaster rifles and DXR6 heavy carbines. These fearsome city guards struck fear into the rebellion, and many rebels would desert their mission due to the mere presence of these droids. Similar variants were also used for other purposes. For instance, the triumphant class Dark Trooper was often used for protection of important individuals, and on occasion were even used by Darth Vader. The Dark Troopers could also be used as tanks when in battle. The Victory class and Inquisitorium Dark Trooper dwarfed ordinary stormtroopers, and even other Dark Trooper variants. Unfortunately, not much is known about them. However, it is known that the Inquisitorium Dark Trooper served as the prototype for the later Phase 3, which we will discuss later on. Perhaps the most feared Phase 2 Dark Trooper variant was the Elite Dark Trooper, armed with a myriad of different advanced weaponry and intricate programming. They were intended to be used as the Empire's new super soldiers. It was said they were extremely effective in the limited amount of battles they took part in. Another similar variant was the Black Hole Dark Trooper. These were essentially designed to replace the organic Shadow Stormtroopers who were associated with Kronal. Although not explicitly stated, it can be assumed that these Dark Troopers had the same upgraded armour as the other Shadow Stormtroopers they were deployed alongside, making them even more lightsaber and blaster resistant. One of the most feared Dark Trooper variants, especially among the remaining Jedi, were the Purge Troopers. Originally designed by the Techno Union, the design would be adopted by the Empire and incorporated into the Dark Trooper project. Twice as large as the average human, they were armed with an energy blade and a shield to protect against lightsaber attacks, as well as magnetic tractor beams to prevent them from being force pushed. They also had a rocket blaster on their right arm, which could fire self guided missiles. These Dark Troopers would kill many of the Jedi who had survived Order 66, with their only real weakness being Force Lightning, an ability which only Starkiller would use against them. The Phase 3 Dark Troopers were by far the largest. These dwarfed even the Inquisitorium Dark Troopers, and were more similar in size and firepower to a Warhammer Space Marine than anything seen in the Star Wars galaxy. Like Phase 2 Dark Troopers, they could also be used as an exoskeleton. They were equipped with a large handheld assault cannon, two shoulder mounted rocket launchers, and a variety of different grenades. They were also made out of the lightsaber resistant metal Frick, much like some of the older variants. However, their armor was much thicker, giving them even greater protection. It was believed that if these Phase 3 Dark Troopers were ever put into mass production, the Rebel Alliance would have been quite easily crushed. The hero of this story, who fortunately put an end to the Dark Trooper project, was Karl Tarn. I won't go too much into his backstory today, but I'll be making a video on him very soon, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Basically, the Chuck Norris of the Star Wars galaxy, Karl Tarn was a force sensitive defector from the Empire and soon became a valuable asset of the Rebel Alliance. Mon Mothma asked Katan to investigate the Dark Troopers. After interrogating an Imperial weapons engineer, Katan infiltrated and later destroyed a Frick mining facility, the origin of the Dark Troopers' blaster and lightsaber resistant armor, leading to long setbacks in the production of Phase 3 Dark Troopers. After destroying another facility involved in their production, he was eventually able to infiltrate Darth Vader's executor, defeating Boba Fett along the way. Using the information from the Executor, he was able to find the Ark Hammer, the production facility of the Dark Troopers. After a long and intense shootout with General Mok, Katan blew up the facility, destroying the Dark Trooper project. 
Emperor Palpatine was so filled with rage that he completely cancelled the project. However, Dark Troopers would appear several times as part of the Imperial Remnant, and were even used by some powerful criminal gangs such as the Hearts. Anyway, that's it for this video. Set me a like, comment, and check out these end screens to help my algorithm. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, may the Force be with you.